Uh, firstly, I'd like to present my congratulations for the World Socialism Research and to the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China, organizers of this already victorious seminar. The theme of our exposition, which is in the Proceedings book, is the world in transition and the new struggle for socialism. The first topic is the current crisis of capitalism and the world in transition. The deterioration of the international situation brought about by the systemic and structural crisis of capitalism is bringing with it growing instability and switch to peace. This in turn means that communists and other democratic, progressive and revolutionary forces need to join force for peace, for sovereignty of nations, for economic and social progress, and for socialism. The crisis is accelerating changes in global power relations. The geopolitical consequences of the crisis are significant, and a new balance of power is emerging in the world. The U.S. National Intelligence Council published a report recently which predicts that U.S. hegemony will continue to decline. Of course, the imperialists wish to reverse this trend. According to the same report, by 2030, the, econo the economy of Asia will be bigger than those of the United States and the European Union combined. Historically, one of the ways for capitalists to destroy productive force and try to overcome the seriousness of a global capitalist crisis is through imperialist war and the promotion of the military industrial complex. There is a new neocolonial momentum underway in the world. Obama has adopted what he calls smart power, a new strategic and defense doctrine. This reflects a change in the U.S. method of waging imperialist wars, with increasing reliance on mercenaries of many nationalities and new technologies such as drones. We saw this in action recently in Libya, and now in Syria and again in Iraq. These events are not Hollywood fiction. They are actually taking the lives of tens of thousands of people and causing millions of casualties and refugees. The current capitalist crisis is not evenly affecting the countries and regions of the world. One important result of the crisis is a phenomenon of the economic rise of China and the other BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, and South Africa. In the BRICS countries, as well as in several South American countries, and in other countries in transition to socialism, the impact of the current economic crisis has so far been much less than in the US, Europe, and Japan. In these countries, and especially in China and India, the emphasis on protecting the national economy and the optimization of the internal market, along with different forms of state planning, social property, and state capitalism, have created barriers to the waves that are spreading the crisis. New geopolitical poles have been created, such as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Another powerful pole is emerging through the process of the integration of Latin America and the Caribbean. The anti-imperialist struggle today is developing based on the struggles of workers and peoples, and also through the struggle of the dependent countries for development and for national independence. Developing countries that struggle for national sovereignty are strengthened in this end by the uneven development of capitalism and have objective contradictions with the imperialist countries. Therefore, they play a country hegemonic role in the world that assists and creates better conditions for the international struggle of peoples, for their national and social liberation, thus creating better conditions for the struggle for socialism the unity of the communists and revolutionaries and the anti-imperialist front. As well as striving for greater unity among communists, it's necessary to create extensive political and social fronts in order to achieve peace 
national independence and economic and social progress. One of the lessons we should draw from the first experience of, const of the construction of socialism in the 20th century is that the transition to socialism comprises steps and phases. It's not direct, but it's more complex and prolonged. Moreover, there is no single model of socialism, nor is there an universal path for conquering political power. From revolutionary Marxist-Leninist theory and the nation of advanced thought of each specific socio-economic formation, every people and every revolutionary force will create its own path to socialism. Proletarian internationalism and anti-imperialist alliance are fundamental to communists. While we accentuate the need to increase friendly relations and cooperation between communists, progressive and revolutionary force, we also emphasize that the relations among those forces should be based on equality, mutual respect, and no interference in internal affairs. Exchange between and the unity of action of revolutionary lefty force are essential, such as in the case of the International Meeting of Communist and Workers' Parties, and the case of the successful Latin America experience of the Sao Paulo Forum, which recently celebrated 24 years of existence. The current, the current experience of transition to socialism remains and are renewed. In the current historical conditions, we are convinced that socialism cannot be built immediately without the mediation of steps and faiths. A close examination of history shows that the building of socialism and the evolution towards a classless society, the communism, is the work of many, many generations. We need to resume the struggle for socialism in the new conditions of the 21st century as the concept of the new struggle for socialism developed by the president of the Communist Party of Brazil, Comrade Renato Rabelo. The beginning of the 90s was marked by widespread losses for the revolutionary movement and for socialism owing to difficulties in maintaining the communist parties and other revolutionary force in an environment of demoralization, discrediting and failure. This environment is not yet fully overcome. The situation is still one of strategic defense, but we are making a new beginning. And all of this only 20 years after a major defeat, which isn't much in historical terms. On the one hand, assessing the great socialist experiments of the 20th century, we can see that there were great economic, social, political, and cultural successes and historical advances, such as the victory of the Soviet Union against Nazi fascism and Second World War and decolonization of Africa and Asia. On the other hand, mistakes were made, and we should take lessons from problems that occurred. Many of these problems have not yet been completely corrected and they continue to occur in the current experience of transition to socialism and in the ideas and actions of the communist and revolutionary force at present. In the field of economy, for example, mistakes include the excessive centralization of planning and the denial of the role of the market, the lack of technological innovation, the low quality of products and the relative shortage. In the political field, we should mention the bureaucracy and the fusion of party state, the lack of popular participation in the management and state sims, the limiting of democratic freedom for, for the people. Dogmatism and opportunism in theoretical field were also problems. And there is also the issue of interference in the internal life of other countries and parties using internationalism as justification. And yet, despite all these problems, the balance is overwhelmingly positive. The contributions to humanity and to civilization made by the first socialist states are invaluable, and so is the legacy of Marxist-Leninist thought, the communist movement, 
and the experience of the transition to socialism in the 20th century. In the same sense, we must accredit and value the socialist experience that are resisted and developed in today in Asia, China, Vietnam, Laos and People's Korea Republic, as well as in Latin America and Cuba, and recognize the new revolutionary capa capabilities and processes that are awakening, especially in Latin America, in countries like Venezuela, among others. The permanence and renewal of these experiences of socialist construction have political and ideological significance. We highlight the whole of People's Republic of China in transition to socialism with China's features. China is an important country in the international arena and objectively, China's whole internationally combines the flags of peace and of cooperation for development, flags that are of interest to many of the peoples and nations of the world. Between 2016 and 2020, estimate of the US National Intelligence Council, China will become the largest economy in the world. The Chinese are making great strides in, bu in building an advanced and increasingly prosperous country for the people. Uh, the last Congress of the Communist Party of China, held in 2012, signaled has priorities for the country, among others. Innovation has the main component of the economy along with sustainable development, increasing urbanization, and improved the environmental policy and a rising quality of life. The new struggle for socialism in Latin America and the Caribbean. Latin America and the Caribbean, in particular, are following the democratic, progressive, and anti-imperialist trend that has developed in recent years, and the region has become a place of resistance and alternatives in which the most advanced nations openly proclaim socialism to be their goal. Participation in the political, anti-imperialist, democratic and progressive fronts that govern important parts of these countries is facilitating the advance of communist and revolutionary parties in Latin America, aiding them in the revolutionary accumulation of force. A minute, please. There, there are a variety of ongoing political processes toward national liberation, and there is also a powerful counteroffensive from the local right wing and from imperialists. However, the trend that is presently developing in Latin America and the Caribbean has the over, overwhelmingly anti imperialist and anti neoliberal bent, reflect, reflecting the wish of the people for alternatives to dependent capitalism. The strengthening of national independence is common to all these progressive countries, and in some, this is also geared toward the transition to socialism. As the Peruvian communist leader, Jose Carlos Mariatti, used it to say, in our Latin American countries, socialism cannot be either a decal or a copy. It must be a right creation of our people, or it will never be. Such was the Cuban Revolution, and so is the economic updating and the improvement of Cuban socialism. Such, also, is the process of the accumulation of revolutionary force taking place in Venezuela, Bolivia, and Ecuador, where there are more advanced experience. Despite having predominantly capitalist economies, these South American countries rely on new constitutions that affirm their socialist orientation. There are important elements of popular power and the process of the socialization of the fundamental means of production has already begun. Currently, in Brazil, a very important part of Latin America, we are struggling, struggling to maintain national governments with a progressive and anti-imperialist orientation, representing a share of power and inaugurating the challenge of building not only more democracy, but also a new popular power. It requires a differentiated and extended process of accumulation of force in which one of the main tasks is the need to update and renew revolutionary theory starting from a concrete, specific, national and continental reality. Thank you very much.